Well, I woke up this morning from a reoccurring dream. All right. Part four of our reaction to Dilda Dr. Do. Thanks so much for coming back, y'all. If you haven't watched part one, two, or three, you should watch those first before watching this one so you can see how we're feeling about the movie up to this point. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us without any cuts or interruptions, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash or become a member of this channel. You'll get access to our full uncut reaction, but you'll need your own copy of the movie. We're watching it through Netflix if you want to watch the exact same version we're watching. So you can open up the movie in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a three to one countdown sync and it'll be like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Okay, finally, let's watch part four. Here we go. Isn't this Farah's room? She left. She got fired. Oh, damn. She got off an hour ago. She kept warning him, too. Like, yeah. Like, yo, you gotta stop coming to my place of work. You're gonna mess up my shit. Yeah, but that's the problem as well, because he's like a young, rich, entitled guy. He just doesn't realize that he might be jeopardizing her career and her future. What's up, Rohan? Sir, it's an emergency. It's imperative that I get off the ship right now. What are you doing? They're going to get off the ship. They're going to get off the ship. Calm down. Listen, if there's an emergency on the ship, they must be having a procedure. Yeah? Uh, Aisha's getting a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nuri, I love you and you will always be my friend. But I can't marry you because I love you with someone else. Hello? <laughs> this is your cue, Nuri. Nuri, can you stay away from her? Nuri, take a minute. I'm really sorry. I'm really You're sorry now. You're sorry. Sorry, it had to happen this way. Happen this way, happen that way. Kabir, ये सब तुमने जो किया है ना, बहुत गलत बात है. Nuri जैसी प्यारी बच्ची के साथ ये सब किया तुमने. जिस लड़की से मैं सच में प्यार करता हूँ, उसे जॉब से निकाला गया, शिप से उतारा गया, मेरी वजह से. पापा, क्या मैं आप पे भरोसा कर सकता हूँ? Good. क्योंकि आप ही मेरी लाइफ हो. Where are you going? Yeah. The emergency. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come in, that's not what I meant. <sighs> Dude, that's a big jump for someone who has no diving experience. Dang, yeah. Ah! Ooh, okay. That's a big Ooh. jump. And that's really dangerous, too. You're like right by the ship. Yeah. That is really dangerous. Yeah, oh my gosh, you guys. Do you know what you're doing? Come on, Uncle! Life boat! Life boat! Oh, they're already on oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't enter. It's his life. Officer, back up. I'll pay you as much as you want. Back up now. They're not listening yet. Emergency. <laughs> All right. They're just holding up the lifeboat situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in it. Get in it. I have to go. Maybe Sadari. Abhi nahi. Abhi nahi to come, Kamal. Re, yaar, come. Get going, you guys. I got down, Pluto. Down. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Just come on, everybody. Let's go, everybody. Okay. Aww. How far did he get? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. Waves are not too big. I don't know about the current though. That's a long swim and it's probably like really cold water. Yeah. Wow. Come on. 
Get in the boat with your crazy family. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Baba. Baba, where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry, hurry. Come on, come on, go, go, go. Oh, come on, Dad. Why are you not stopping? What is the problem? Come on, Baba, please relax. You just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> But does he find her? Why? Okay, there's no closure here. What? Is she gonna find? Is he gonna find her? Is there like? Is there like a, an, another song at the end where they find each other? I guess that doesn't matter. I guess we can assume that they found each other. <laughs> well, I guess it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> See, it is Dil the Dakade. No. Every heart beats differently. Is that what it is? Every heart is different. Yeah, now it's sixties with the mini skirts and the uh, but, white boots. But but I would have I would have liked seeing the um, uh, you know, the moment where they reunite. Yeah. Because like he cost her her job, so I know. How, like, what does she do? Or maybe it's just that that's not the important part of the story. The the important part of the story is the communication and the reconciliation within the family, and that they're all like living their truth now. Yeah, sure. But I still care about her character. I know, because she was so cool. I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see the cheesy rom com moment where somehow he finds her and he's yeah. like Farah, mm -hmm. and she's like, "What?" Yeah. And he's like, "I love you," and she's like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's exactly how that goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stellar <laughs> recreation of every romantic comedy there. <laughs> <clears throat> Gotta say, like, Farhan Akhtar and uh, Ranveer Singh, they worked out a lot in this movie. Like, they were popping out of their shirts. I'm like, oh, hello. You did not skip Upper Body Day. Couldn't tell with the legs, to be honest. Mm. But I'm sure they didn't skip Leg Day either. I think Zoya Akhtar might be one of my all-time favorite directors. Yeah. Um, her ability to really like dive deep into this like just the human condition and explore ideas that are I, I would imagine are difficult more difficult topics in India yeah. than, than here but her ability to explore that and make me feel things is like you know this was not the movie that I thought it was gonna be. I hadn't watched the trailer. I'd only ever seen that one music video that we watched together. Mm -hmm. And it was the one, the, the really fun song on, on the boat, right? Like when they were all singing together. Right. And so I thought that this was gonna be like a more bombastic rom-com with definitely more com than rom. Well, like an equal amount of rom and com. And as the movie started, and as it carried on, I was like, oh, tonally, this is not what I was expecting at all. I really liked how like all of these actors that we've seen before, and especially Ranveer Singh, who I kind of associate with having that more like over the top bombastic style of acting that I've seen him do recently. This was like very just naturalistic and restrained for him. For the most part. Like he's still himself, right? Like he still has like those sparks of personality that come through that that like is just so special for him. I appreciated just how uh, realistic and understated the acting was. And for me, uh, the standout was Chef Ali Shah because I mean, I love her, but just her ability to show all different emotions while keeping it just kind of really locked down, especially in that one scene when Anil Kapoor asks her, 
why didn't you leave me? And she's like, well, you know, Kabir was right. I had nowhere to go. And you could see like all the twitching in her face that was happening because she was like trying to keep the emotion down. Yeah. But you felt for her because it was just like a really natural response. And I think, in fact, all of the acting in this movie with the main cast, with Priyanka, with Ranbir, with Anil Kapoor and Chef Ali Shah, it was all very very natural and I, I feel like you know they were playing with subtext really well because the, a lot yeah because the yeah. whole point the, the whole movie is like what is the facade yeah. what's really going on behind you well, know it was most strongly emphasized I think when she encountered uh, Farhan Akhtar for the first time like they got to, yeah. got to talk and he's like how are you and she's like oh, I'm great marriage yeah. is great I'm so happy but like we all know what's actually going on with her because in real life we're constantly lying we're constantly not saying saying exactly what we are feeling. And this film does that to like the highest degree possible where characters are often interacting and saying things that it's all surface, but like, but you know that there are layers underneath there yeah. of what, what's actually going on with them. Anil Kapoor just trying to keep everything together while he's taking anti-anxiety medication yeah. or the wife who's trying to make sure, you know, she maintains her image, but like she's secretly, you know, binge eating because she's unhappy. Yeah, um, or even the fact that they're doing this extravagant celebration on a cruise. Just for face. Just, just for face yeah. when they're at, like on the brink of bankruptcy. It seems outlandish in a way but it feels real do you know what I mean like these are things yeah. I think that actually happen because people are you know trying to save face so much people remain in relationships or make their children be in relationships that they don't actually want to be in yeah. and people spend way more money than they actually have in order to save face in front of everyone well, one of my um, difficult uh, uh, hurdles with something like Wake Up Sid is I'm watching a movie about a young rich brat how, yeah. how can I feel for this kind of character and I think by the end of that movie, I, I did feel for him. But there was that thing of like, I'm watching a movie about a really wealthy kid. Yeah. And I was sort of encountering the same thing initially here. But I think that there's enough going on in this picture where you can still relate to what's going on yeah. with these characters. It's yeah. like maybe it's abstract for you because like, you know, removed because like we are nowhere near that level of wealth or whatever. Right. Yeah. I think that at the end of the day, they are still human beings dealing with human problems. Exactly. That I think all of us can kind of relate to because we all all sort of deal with that at some point in our lives. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was really well done because like you, I was kind of wondering like, how would the average Indian person relate to this? Because this is representing the 1%, the people yeah. who are so wealthy that they can afford these extravagant vacations and pay for like however many of their friends to come along with them that's a shit ton of money i'm certainly not familiar with they were able to make it relatable because as you say the the issues are still human like yeah. we all understand family we all understand like these familial conflicts and everything that was going on so it was kind of escapism in one way while still making it relatable to the audience yeah I think they did a all right job of tying up all the loose ends of the film. They didn't show us everything we wanted to see, but I think that enough was implied that it all works out. She tells Farhan Akhtar, will you wait for me? She's like, say something. Are you going to wait for me? He's like, I'll yeah. wait for you forever. So you know that they, they work it out. That was sweet. The scene that hit me the hardest was when she was eating the chocolate. Like, that really f***ed me up for some reason. I don't yeah. know. Because she's, like, she's poisoning herself because she's like, she's... She's hurting herself. Well, she's you know? so unhappy. I mean, it, it's so many layers as well, right? Because you could see that every time her husband was mentioning something about her weight, yeah. it like it hurt her. Well, so it cut deep. It cut Cause, deep. Because he wasn't even like shy about talking about it. He was saying it in front of everybody. Yeah. And then to have that moment in the privacy of her own room where like all her insecurities are coming to surface, where yeah. she's faced with the reality, I guess, of her husband doing that in front of her and it it just kills her and so she's like i don't even give a shit anymore and yeah. i just want to hurt myself yeah. you know it is uncomfortable watching scenes where people do that i mean we just watched the great film uh, the whale that's you know, the point of the whole movie the, that is yeah. that the, there's a, a lot of that going on and yeah. it's just so difficult to watch because you're watching someone in like the throes of their self-loathing yeah. and I think in some way we can all kind of like I think we can all kind of relate, relate to that to though it. and I know what it's like to go through something like that all of us at some point or another will hurt ourselves because we're just trying to 
squash the pain somehow with yeah. something else or it's almost like we want to drive ourselves further down because we are hurting it's the weirdest thing that is hard to explain like human psychology is just difficult to like the, the greatest minds in the world still are trying to wrap their heads around human psychology and understanding the human brain and why we do the things that we do yeah but i think hurting ourselves is a common thing like you've heard of people cutting themselves or something like that you know um that's just one example i'm trying not to get too deep into that topic because then youtube will have a problem i think that's why that scene hurt me like yeah. just to watch it, it was her acting across the board I thought the acting was great yeah but her acting Anil Kapoor's acting Priyanka like the main cast did a fantastic job the the supporting cast did a wonderful job but I think the mom really stuck out to me as like the one that stole the show in yeah. terms of performance where I'm just like I I am really feeling everything she feels you know yeah she's so so good like I, I think that as an actress she really just inhabits the character and she, she you know she does that thing where she's like she just is that person yeah. and you buy her as that person and you're not really thinking about like oh this is the actress or whatever you're just like oh that's just this person who's living this life on screen yeah. it's it's very very good there's something about the way Zoya Akhtar tells her stories that I don't get bored the runtime I'm not gonna lie I did feel it but yeah. like but I, I was still so engaged with everything that was happening and she she just she knows where to put the camera. She knows how to talk to her actors, and she knows what, how to get the performances she needs. She's a, rem a remarkable director. She does everything she needs to in her m movie to make you feel something and connect with the characters. Yeah. And I think that every time I've watched one of her films, you leave thinking about like your own life in some capacity in some way you reflect and it gives you something to chat about especially if you watch it with your family it really gives you something to to converse about after or friends or whatever yeah 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 you know i thought it was interesting as well having the narrator be the dog because it's just a, it's different it's different yeah. and it's also it it is exactly what you were saying about like you know human beings are weird yeah and it's fun to have the narrator be a non-human kind of observing and going i just don't understand why these people just don't tell each other what they actually feel i think that's a very asian thing though like to not communicate yeah I absolutely i i hate that because i'm all about <laughs> communication to probably to a degree that's too much right but like i'm all about being as straightforward as you can and letting your partner your family know what you're feeling as difficult as it might be because otherwise you end up in a marriage that you don't want to be in for instance as, in, yeah. as, as the film shows us and you're agreeing to things that you don't necessarily have your heart invested in and things just get dramatically worse i think in the long run when you don't communicate what you're actually feeling inside yeah. this movie is like we don't communicate the movie <laughs> like, yeah because like, nobody is saying we what they're feeling. We don't talk to each other. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the way the movie is structured, you're supposed to hate Rahul Bose. By the end, it's like what he did was messed up. Like he's like grabbing her like, we got to go. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know. Blah, blah, blah. He and really it, leaned into that. I yeah. was like, yeah, now I really don't like you. Because in the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, I get it. They're not happy. It's not his fault. Like he's trying, but she just doesn't love him. But when he put his, when he grabbed her wrist and yeah. was like, you have to come with me. I'm going to like, you know like you're my property or something I was like oh yeah. no you have just crossed into you're a villain territory now yeah. well, all of that was handled fine it was adequate for the story it was the one weak spot for me though in the movie because I could see everything coming there I wanted the movie to do something different and do a u-turn that's unexpected because when you introduce uh, Farhan Akhtar you already know where the movie's going at least as far as their story is concerned yeah you know it's like that is extremely predictable what would have surprised me is if somehow against all odds Rahul Bose is able to spark an interest in maybe trying to figure out a way to make it work with Priyanka it seems impossible yeah but that's the interesting part is because it's impossible how do you make that how do you get over that hurdle because he just turned into this like two-dimensional jerk by the end of the film and i'm like yeah. no but he is such an interesting actor and an interesting character and even the arguments he was making when she was like looking at the mirror and she was trying to get the words out i want a divorce yeah he had like every villain believes they're the good guy in their story right and so he is making his justifications and i'm listening to his justifications and i'm like i get where he's coming from like he's wrong but i understand where he's coming from and I really hope that these two can find a way to maybe get past this crazy impossible hurdle. And it just goes the cliche direction of she's got to leave him and blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's not cliche for Indian films, 
but like that is the expected route for me. Right, but I guess they they had two couples. Well, in fact, they had many couples in this, right? But then they had the the, the parents. parents tried, the parents worked the it parents out. The parents patched it up. So yeah. at least we got that example. It's like okay, sometimes maybe it's not worth. Uh, trying to make it work in that situation with Priyanka and Rahul Bose. I'm like, okay, I think I agree that her heart was never in it. You know, she wanted to be with the guy who she wanted her to be with since forever. But I I'm glad that at least the the parents were able to realize like they did love each other and they just needed to pay attention yeah. instead of, you know, distracting each other, like him being distracted with chasing other women and her like distracting herself with gossip and, and shopping and all that. Because obviously, she you know, Priyanka was, was brought into a situation she did not want to be in, right? Yeah. And she agreed to it for her parents, for her the honor and, and respect of her family and business, etc. And uh, also because she felt abandoned by yeah. uh, Farhan Akhtar's character. Sure. Like all the, justifica Sunny, yeah. all, all the justifications were made. I just wish the movie showed us like something different because it, it, like we, we she never communicated to him anything. She was just cold. I felt bad for him for a lot of the movie up right. until he put his hands on her. That was that was the only point where I I was like, well, now you're a jerk. But like up until that moment, like I, I like while he his perspective might be flawed and he doesn't fully have the he doesn't have the full scope of what's going on in his own marriage and like how he's acting towards her. No one is educating him. No one's telling him, yo, you got to straighten up here. Like this is not how you're supposed to behave. This is not how you're supposed to look at things. No one's even trying. If you gave me one scene, just one scene where someone was trying to get through to him and he just blew her off or whatever. Yeah. Okay, fine. At least you gave me that. But no one tried to get through to him. And I mean, the most important one being Priyanka. She never said to him, like, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. Right. You know, for, and for reasons or whatever. And maybe it is just kind of more... Maybe it is more like what relationships are expected to be within an Indian family. Because they were kind of talking about how, you know, once she married him, she was no longer part of her family. She belonged to their like she family was property. now. Like, yeah. like she was property. Yeah. And so, like, I guess he was just holding on to that tradition and that assumption where it's like, no, you're part of my family. You're mine now. Like, what is your connection to your family and I, I loved I loved as well in the movie how close her relationship was with her brother like I loved yeah. I loved how they always showed close-ups where they would be like looking at each other and communicating to each other without using words and, and you get that sense of like how much they they do love each other right and I really felt for her when she, like especially at the end when her husband was like oh we have to go and she's like no but that it's my that's my parents it's my parents anniversary right. like and then he's like yeah but you're part of my family now and it's like i i totally felt for her being caught in the middle there in that dichotomy of like okay well there's a family that i married into but this is like my family that's my my blood you know yeah no i i i see what you're saying that's a, that's a very hairy uh, conundrum yeah. to, to be in, but like it was, it was a little bit. Um, that was slightly confusing to me, only because she had declared she wanted a divorce. She had declared that she didn't want a relationship with anymore uh, with him anymore. And so for him to say, "Let's go," I'm like, "Hold on, isn't his power stripped from him now? Like he doesn't have the right to say that anymore." I'm, I'm very. I was a little confused as to why he was saying that and why she was even sort of uh, entertaining that notion for even a split second. You know yeah, what I, mean? I guess it was just that he he was like, I don't agree to this divorce, and therefore, if he doesn't agree as the man, then no oh, divorce is taking place. Pluto was a mere con. I didn't know that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I just pulled up the IMDb. I didn't realize that. That's funny. Oh, no wonder it was like I was like, oh, I I really like this voice. It's kind of familiar. And yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it's a mere con. Duh. Uh, so, uh, the actress who I w was remarking about is Shafali Shah. She plays yeah. Neelam. Um, and then Anushka Sharma did a wonderful job for the role she was given here. I mean, obviously that's with the help of Zoya Akhtar and the writing and all that stuff. But like, it also takes really good actors to bring that out um, mm -hmm. from the characters. And I thought that you know. All the history that she was talking about, like, I know Anushka Sharma didn't actually, like, sleep on the streets of London and whatever, whatever. But, like, while she was telling her story, I was buying into her story. You know, every time yeah. she was talking about, like, 
this is what I love, etc. Don't talk to me here. This is my job. I believed that was her job. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, I know that sounds stupid, but for me to buy into this millionaire's performance as this person who just, you know, is a middle class individual, that moment where Anil Kapoor loses his shit because uh, uh, Ayesha? Ayesha? Aisha. Aisha, uh, played by Priyanka Chopra. She wants a divorce, and he's just like getting really, really worked up and yelling at her. And then he tells his son to, you know, screw off. Like, you got nothing. Like, what yeah. are you going to do? And I was trying my best to see his perspective on it and like have empathy because he's he's upset. He's like losing control of the situation. Yeah. And that's why he's saying these awful things. But what he's really saying underneath all that rage is, I care deeply about you. And I'm yeah. trying to make sure you guys are going to be okay. That's why I'm enraged right now. The way it all kind of came, they all came back together because of the, you know, they thought he had a heart attack. I thought that was realistic. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, it's very realistic. It's it's very realistic in fights with people that you're close to, like family or close friends or whatever, to cut that deep yeah. and to say those things that you know are gonna like will cut to the core of that person and really hurt them because you know what those things are and it's messed up but as people we do that sometimes yeah. you know and you're right i mean i think that is a very important thing to remember is that it was coming from a place of love and i hadn't really thought about that but i, I guess that's what makes it like so emotionally relatable charged, and, yeah. and emotionally charged yeah. yeah the dance sequences in the film were interesting the music breaks in movies can be hit or miss for me but i thought most of them i thought were a lot of fun especially the one on the um i don't know the dance floor where all the camera was like circling yeah, around yeah, the yeah. that was really like yeah. just technically that was really good film work as yeah, well it was impressive it was ambitious but not just ambitious it conquered the ambition that it sought out to do you know because the between the movement and everyone is still being their character and the music and like it all it all came together really really well in my opinion yeah you know for me not knowing too much about that side of filmmaking i thought that that was excellent i thought it was really well done because it was a lot of fun to watch it kind of made you feel like you want to move and it was very dynamic especially for just being this one little spot yeah yeah it, it was marvelous the way that it they just had so much energy to it you know yeah what I mean? yeah i liked it a lot very very good and then the tribute to all the the throwback of i don't know if it's american music or indian music but like for me it looks american of like the 50s rock 60s rock and stuff like that yeah. in terms of the style and whatever what they were doing on the performance on stage i thought all that was really cool as well and it's just fun, you know? Yeah, it it was fun. And there were definitely some really great laugh out loud moments for me where it was just like so awkward. The situational comedy was really good here at certain times. This movie was way more dramatic than I bargained for. Mm -hmm. I think it was just because I was not prepared for the tone of the movie and so every now and then when when i had the laughs that i was like oh yeah i'm really enjoying just kind of the the awkwardness of the situation mm -hmm. because it's just like it cuts into the drama really well so you're not just always like oh no you know what i mean yeah so, yeah i mean somehow zoe octar has a knack for making fun drama because there was za no, was it Zamelek Na Dubara? Zindagi Na ZMND, right? Yeah. Zindagi Na Malegi Dubara? Correct. Okay. And then um, the other one with Ranveer Singh. Uh, uh, Gully Boy. Gully Boy, yeah. Each of those films is a fun drama. It's like the whole the whole movie's engaging. And it, like, it makes you feel things. Yeah. It makes you think. You almost don't want it to end. You know what I mean? Like yeah. getting to the end of ZMND, I'm like, I kind of like just want this to keep going. Like it's you spend time with these characters and you fall in love with all of them and you just want to keep hanging with them. When the film ended, I was after three hours, I was like, you know, I could probably go for another 30 minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would like to see where these characters go for a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, and she she leaves you probably at the sweet spot where it leaves you wanting just a little bit more. And that's actually a really good thing. Yeah. You know, as yeah. opposed to giving you too much. And then you're like, Ugh, when's this movie going to end? Yeah, very satisfying. Very yeah. satisfying. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, do subscribe, bell icon, all notifications, vote this up. If you're watching this on uh, memberships or Patreon, thanks so much for supporting us here. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Cook. Peace out.